Greetings. Somebody sent me a, a an email. You know who you are. I'm not going to say your name. Uh, so I'm going to read this, and I'm going to try to answer it to the best of my ability. Uh, here's the email. Hello, Chaplain Bob. I've been listening for some time. Thank you for the studies you provide. They've been very helpful. Well, my comment. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm glad to hear it. Sure beats the black Hebrews that uh, say they can't wait for me to be dead since I'm of Esau. So thank you. Yeah, it's, it's nice to get uh, a thanks instead of a death threat. So, all right, let's read more of the letter. The more I read Matthew 24, etc., and comments about uh, by Paul about the entire world having received the gospel, and John 4, where Jesus commented on the harvest being close as the fields were already white, which by itself I'm not sure could make the argument, but in light of Paul's several comments that the entire world had received the gospel, I have to ask if it did not already come to pass. Good question. Uh, here's my comments. Um, well, in, uh, let's see, Jesus said that he only came for the house of Israel, and Israel was to be scattered throughout all the world. So, I don't know. It, it seems to me that, uh, yeah, maybe it's already come to pass, you know, so. All right, next uh, comment. I know the world as we know it suggests that it didn't, but is it biblically possible to rule out that we are not in the time of Satan's rule following the thousand-year reign of Jesus? Uh, it's my consideration that we could be in a huge deception. So is there something in the Bible that can absolutely rule out that Jesus did not return already and we are past him ruling for the thousand years? All right, my comment here. Let's take a look at some Bible verses. Now, you got to understand something. Now, this is me talking in answer to this uh, question. Uh, the When Jesus was crucified and his body died, okay, he went, he said... Uh, Boy, this is uh, this could be a real this could be a real long Bible study, and if you're interested, uh, send me a comment or an email. I'll send you some Bible studies that I've done. I mean, this could be this could be a three or four hour study easily. The the uh, this question because there's a lot of things tied into it. But when Jesus' body was on the cross and died. Uh, Jesus said, well, the, uh, the Pharisees had asked Jesus that, well, they wanted to see a sign from him. And Jesus said, an evil and adulterous generation shall not be given a sign except for the sign of the prophet Jonas. And Jonah was, you know, three days and three nights in the whale's belly. And on the third day, Jesus was resurrected. He was given his resurrected body. So... I did a Bible study on, uh, let's see, it was called Abraham's Bosom. And if you read the, uh, the story of the rich man and Lazarus, and I do not believe that that is a parable. No, because for one thing, Jesus mentioned Abraham by name and the rich man having a conversation with him. And Lazarus, he mentions Lazarus by name. I mean, if it was a parable, he would have just said, well, there was a, a beggar that was at the rich man's gate. No, he said Lazarus. And then the rich man's having a conversation with Abraham. He's saying, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he might dip his finger in water and put it on my tongue because I'm tormented in this flame. So I don't believe that that's a parable. Absolutely not, but that's just my opinion, and I'm not, you know, I'm not the Pope, I'm not always right, what can I tell you? But the thing is, it, it appears that there were two compartments in hell. 
There was the flames where the wicked were, the rich man. And then there was Abraham's bosom, which was separated by a gulf, a valley. And I believe there's, you know, you got to realize there's not a lot of information on the Bible about some of some things. There's just, they're mentioned, but there's not a lot of information on it. But Abraham and all the Old Testament saints seem to have been in Abraham's bosom, which was this compartment in hell. They were in hell, but they were not being tortured. So I, my opinion is, uh, the Bible study I did, that when Jesus died, he went into the heart of the earth, like he said he would, for three days and three nights, where he probably preached that he was the Christ, the Messiah, believe on me and have eternal life. And they all believed. And then they went up to the kingdom where they are awaiting their resurrected bodies. So after Jesus was resurrected on the third day, he appeared to Mary. He appeared to Peter and a few other people. He appeared unto them. Uh, but we're not, we're not, I'm going to cover that a little later. Hold on. All right. Um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, in verse 13, Paul writes, But I would not have you to be ignorant. And what does ignorant mean? It means you don't know something. You know, when it comes to brain surgery, I'm ignorant. Uh, rocket science, I'm ignorant. I, You know, ask me the Bible questions, I'm not so ignorant. There's some things I'm ignorant about, but... I know more about the Bible than I do uh, brain surgery, that's for sure. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That means dead. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which, uh, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Did, did we, were we ever caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air? Um, I, if we did, I missed it, which means I'm going to hell. Now, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. Now, please remember in 2 Peter, is it 2 Peter? No, 2 Peter? I think it's in 2 Peter. I'm not sure. But it says, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So when it says, shall shortly come to pass, is it, you know, talking about from God's point of view? I mean, shortly come to pass, a couple days would be to us a couple, you know, a couple thousand years. And it's been almost 2,000 years since Christ was crucified. So, you know, if I told my daughter, oh, okay, you know, here it is uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, and when I get paid at the end of the week, Friday, I'm going to, I'll buy you your whatever, you know, your dress or whatever you want that she's asking, right? So I'll, I'll get that for you shortly. Well, you know, it's a couple days. But to the Lord, you're talking a couple thousand years. To us, yeah, shortly <laughs> is a couple thousand years, you know. But, um, you know, I don't know. So you got to understand, this is probably written from the Lord's perspective. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. 
and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Yeah, that's in uh, 2 Peter 3 and verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Okay, Revelation chapter 1, verse 2. Um, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and those and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that saved uh, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever see god knows the beginning the present and the end so when you're looking at it from god's perspective he says he half made us it's like past tense it's like it's already happened but to him you know there's no perspective of time like with us you know it's just but uh you know i haven't been made a king or a priest yet from my perspective you know but god's already got the end that's been written from the beginning he's already read the book from cover to cover. He already knows the beginning to the end, but we're like in the middle or, or whatever, you know. So, you know. But here's here's the catchphrase, verse 7. Behold, he, who's he? Christ. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Just like we read in Thessalonians, right? Paul. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Every eye shall see him. Have we seen him coming with the clouds? No, I haven't. So this can't, this can't be, this couldn't have yet have happened. And every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, am, uh, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. All right, uh, what I mentioned before was in Matthew chapter 12. Uh, let's see, where are we going to start? So it's going to be around verse 36 or so. Okay, verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Oh, yeah, show us another miracle. The first 20, 30 miracles you showed us, we didn't believe. So show us another one so we can continue to not believe, right? We would see a sign from thee. Well, you know, if you were hanging around, you'd have seen people raised from the dead, the blind receiving their sight, the deaf can hear, the, the blind can see. Isn't that enough? No. I mean, he raised Lazarus from the dead. I mean, come on. And that's a that's a, a different Lazarus than I believe. I believe it's a different Lazarus, um, the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus was the brother of Martha and Mary. So, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Verse 39. But he, Jesus, but he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay? Very important. Three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. 
The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. And jo Jonas is just the Greek rendering of the word Jonah in the Old, you know, Hebrew Old Testament. All right, let's read uh, Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. Purple is the color of royalty. So evidently, this guy was probably of the tribe of Judah, the king's tribe. And when it says he fared sumptuously every day, means he, he, he ate very well. Verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, more, uh, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell... He lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing seeth Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham. So evidently, this guy is an Israelite. Okay, because uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were the fathers of the Israelites. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son? See, Abraham didn't say, Oh, no, you're, you're one of those heathen Gentiles. No. He said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So, uh, the rich man's in a flame, but Lazarus is being comforted. So, obviously, they're not in the same spot of hell, right? They're, you know. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So, what's a gulf? It's like a, a valley, right? So that they which would pass from Thence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. We can't go to you, and you can't come to us. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. All right, I'm going to assume you've read the uh, crucifixion of Jesus. So let's go to John chapter 20. Now this is after Christ had died. And, uh, well, let's read. John 20, verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. What's a sepulcher? It's just a grave, you know, like a cave that they're using for a grave. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and I think that's John, and saith unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For 
as yet they knew not the sepulcher, that he must rise again from the dead. That he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own house. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and seeth two angels, two angels in white, sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. So here it is. This is, uh, you know, the third day. Jesus is, uh, you know, resurrected. Okay. Verse 15. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She's supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not. Touch me not. Now, for some reason, it was not, you know, I don't understand why, but Jesus did not want her to touch him. He said, she, he said, touch me not, for I'm not yet ascended to my father. Now, remember when Thomas said uh, at Pentecost, he says, except I put my fingers into his side and, and my, my fingers into the prints of his hand, I will not believe. And, and Jesus actually let Thomas do the, touch him. But at this point in time, he says, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and to your God. Okay, so. All right, let's continue reading. Verse 18, John 20 and verse 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. And they're all thinking probably, oh, this crazy woman, why are we listening to her, right? That's probably what they were thinking. Verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed, them, breathed, breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So here it is, he's giving them the Holy Spirit, the Holy, uh, you know, they're going to have the power, power. They're going to have power. Verse 23, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retained, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord 
and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did, did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Now, the point being is that Jesus, in the flesh, his body died. For three days and three nights, he said he went to the heart of the earth. My opinion is he went to Abraham's bosom and preached unto the disciples. And I have a, uh, an entire Bible study on Abraham's bosom. If you're interested, you can read about it. Uh, one of the, somebody wrote that he went to preach unto the spirits in prison. What prison? I think hell. That's my opinion. Now, after the third day, Jesus was resurrected, right? He appeared unto Mary. He appeared unto Thomas. He appeared unto the disciples. And he gave them the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. However, in Acts chapter 2, and verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now you got to realize, these, you know, after this event happened, uh, they had, they were doing all kinds of miracles and stuff. You know, they had power. Is this uh, where they were talking about the kingdom of God coming? I don't know. All right, let's see. Did the, the apostles, did they have power after the, uh, the they received the Holy Ghost and, and all those that were, you know, the day of Pentecost? Acts chapter 3. Verse 1, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. You know, he was, he was a beggar. He was asking for, you know, money so he could live. I mean, obviously the guy can't work, right? That's what alms are, charity who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple and asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. In other words, look at me. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. And notice they didn't say in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. No, they didn't, he, they didn't say that. They said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaped up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man to walk? The God of Abraham 
and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye deny the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and kill the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before hath showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So, all right, let's go back to the letter. Um, uh, the, the, the letter that I got, it says, Jesus' warnings seemed to be to his current followers. Paul, Paul said some of them would still be alive to see Jesus return. Well, guess what? Didn't some of the people get to see Jesus returned? I mean, he was crucified. He was buried. He was in the um, heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And then he uh, appeared unto Thomas. He appeared unto Peter. He blew on them the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's kind of how, that's my take on it. All right, uh, next sentence. How will the people of the time of the deception know that they are in the time of Satan's rule? Uh, what does the Bible say to help them recognize that as being the time of Satan's rule? Well, uh, the book of Revelation says that Jesus is going to well, let's read it. Okay, uh, right now, right now, we are in Satan's rule. I mean, just read the newspaper or the headlines. I mean, it's pretty evil, right? Now, remember, uh, it said that if we weren't caught up together in the clouds with him, uh, you know, and every eye would see him, Christ has not returned yet. Uh, for the whole world. It, it just, it hasn't happened. I mean, at the beginning of when I started speaking, it said that we'd be caught up together with him in the clouds and that every eye would see him. Well, it hasn't happened yet. So we're still here. We're still under, we're still waiting for Christ to return with the armies. But yet some people did see Christ Thomas saw Christ in his resurrected body. And you ask another question that I'm going to go into some detail uh, later. But let's read Revelation chapter 20. Now, uh, when Christ returns and sets up his kingdom, then this happens. Revelation 20 verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, if Satan's bound for a thousand years today, uh, there sure is a lot of evil. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. Um, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. <clears throat> 
All right. Uh, so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he should be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Has that happened yet? No, but it's getting ready to happen. Uh, look up the Noahide laws, N-O-A-H-I-D-E, laws, uh, the penalty for uh, breaking a capital crime in the Noahide laws is beheading. I know everybody likes to say, oh, it's the Muslims, it's the Muslims. Uh, look up the Noahide laws. Matter of fact, uh, I listened to a video today by uh, Stephen D. Noon. I'm not a big fan of his, but I'll tell you what, the video that I watched today, uh, there was not one thing on that half-hour Bible uh, study and current events news cast that I disagreed with him on. i beginning to change my opinion of him. But um, he talks about the Sanhedrin, which is the Jewish court. Jesus had a, a trial where they, when he was taken from the garden and taken to the temple uh, leaders, the Jews, as you could say, uh, he was given a trial where they set false witnesses against him. That was the Sanhedrin. That's what, well, that's what they call themselves. So, all right. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Have you seen all the, the, the dead uh, been resurrected? I haven't. I have not seen the dead resurrected yet. So uh, this has got to be future. Uh, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired... Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, and the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So, I think this is future. All right, let's go back to reading this letter. I think the evidence of a more recent catastrophic event where buildings and other structures have their lower, lower stories underground. Buildings that were that clearly were built to have the windows, doors, etc. above ground. These partially buried buildings are present in eastern Canada, including Toronto, the U.S. East Coast, parts of Russia and Europe. How does this happen if not from some catastrophic event since they were built. I'm not sure. But I'll tell you what, building uh, uh, large parts of the building underground, uh, the, ground, it, the ground is cooler in the summer and it's warmer in the winter. That's why people lived in like caves and stuff because it maintained a more level temperature. Uh, when you go like six feet underground, uh, usually stays a constant 55 degrees. You know, so when it's uh, zero, when it's zero outside and there's snow on, and ice outside, 55 is pretty good. Or if you're in the desert and uh, it's 120, uh, 55 is pretty good. You know, you're out in the middle of a hot desert in the sun and you're putting on a sweater. That's that's really good. Uh, let's go back to the letter. Why are there castles in Russia and churches in your England that were built with no way to heat them? That's a good question. Were they built in a time when it was warmer? You know, that's very, very possible. If so, why is there no record of a big weather change? Uh, 
you know what? They didn't start keeping records of weather until like a hundred and something years ago in the United States. Maybe they're just, you know, records weren't kept. People were not, I don't know. We didn't have a standard of measurement. I mean, today we've got in the uh, America, we've got Fahrenheit. And then in uh, Europe, they use uh, the metric. What is it? Centigrade or Celsius? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe there wasn't a standard of measurement. Maybe they just didn't have a way to measure it like we did. You know, thermometers. How long have thermometers been around? I don't know. Uh, but not they haven't been around for thousands of years. I don't think so. I suggest it was warmer during Christ's reign and Satan's return came with much change. That's possible. Um, I'm sure in Adam and Eve's time, it was most definitely different. Uh, back to letter. I know it sounds fantastic, but you know the Bible better than me. and eh, not necessarily. Uh, there's a lot of things I don't know. Uh, so if you can find passages that make this impossible, I'd be interested to know them. Also, if we truly are in the time of the Great Deception, are there passages that were written to help us through the last days of Satan's short final rule of this world? And I have read uh, a few of them. Now remember, in Thessalonians, what I read at the beginning of this um, talk, it says that uh, if we're not caught up in the clouds to be with him, it's the false messiah. If, if we have to um, take a some kind of a mark, uh, the King James says in the right hand or in the forehead. The modern Bibles say on. Uh, I personally, I, I'm going to... I, I trust the King James. I don't trust the modern Bibles. But unless you, if you can't buy or you can't sell without having something in your right hand or in your forehead, that's probably going to end up being the mark of the beast. All right, let's go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that which that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, we're not going to, those that are dead, asleep in, in Christ, we're not going to be able to affect anything having to do with them. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So much for the secret rapture, right? with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So if we're not caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and we're going to be with him forever, if that, has, if that doesn't happen, and there's another one that claims to be a Messiah, and this doesn't happen, it's the wrong Christ. It's the wrong Messiah. We have to be caught up with Christ in the clouds, in the air. That's, you know, so if this doesn't happen, it's not the Jesus of the Bible. Now, there's a thing. Uh, I've heard it called preterism. I've heard it called preterism. Uh, when people start arguing over pronunciation more than doctrines, I would avoid them. But uh, what they do is they say that Christ returned uh, in the past and that everything basically is in the Bible is past. Well, you know, that's the thing. If, if, we haven't been caught up in the clouds to be with Christ, so how could that be passed? Uh, you know, that's probably where you were wondering, asking these questions, because that sounds like what they call preterism or preterism. They, they claim everything's in the past. Uh, but Jesus did. He, when, he, when, he, when his physical body died, he returned. He did. He returned to Mary. He returned to Peter and, and John. 
and then he returned to Thomas. But then he went up to be with the Father. But when he returns in glory, uh, every eye is going to see him. There's going to be no mistaking that. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I um, answered your questions. You know, I, I try. Um, oh, you know what? I'm not finished yet. Now, uh, in John chapter 3, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, and in verse 3, Jesus said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in verse 5, he said, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now remember, the disciples and those that were in the, the room in the day of Pentecost, they received the Holy Ghost. They received the Spirit. So, you, you know, you just can't go in without that, right? So, let's take a look. In the book of Romans... Uh, 14 and verse 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, first Corinth, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. All right, let's take a look at Luke chapter 17. Verse 11, And it came to pass as he, Jesus, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, being, uh, I'm sorry, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So, <laughs> check this out. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? You know, he, clean, he cleansed 10 people, and only one of them gave him thanks. Were there not 10 cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come... He answered them and said, the kingdom, of, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The day will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things, and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, that's Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah, Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they building. 
But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Well, we're still here, so um, it's it hasn't happened yet. In that day, he sh which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him come not down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. And this, um, and it's talking here about um, if, if you try to save your life over the gospel of Christ, you're going to, you'll lose it. And if you'll lose your life for your testimony of Jesus, you'll preserve it. I'll, I'll prove that in a minute. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, and one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Then they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. And you know what's funny is uh, they'll say, well, they're talking about vultures here. Uh, yeah. Did you know there's a vulture called an eagle vulture? From what I understand, it's the largest one. I'm, I don't know. In Matthew 16, 25, this is a little more clearer. Jesus speaking. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Mark 8, 35. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his sake, I'm sorry, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. All right, well, I I hope this answered all your questions. Uh, and uh, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.